Hey everyone, how's it going and welcome back to the second channel. I really like taking these things apart. These are some retro audio handheld technology related things. Uh, but when I make videos about them on my main channel, they never really do very well um, and people get a little bit upset understandably because my main channel audience has grown from other things uh, so to stay true to myself and because I really enjoy doing it I'm going to continue doing them probably on a regular basis on this second channel and hopefully we can grow another little audience about this as well um, I've also got a Polaroid camera a vintage Polaroid camera the first Polaroid camera um, that I want to do a repair to and a restoration to uh, so that's another thing that's going to come up in recent weeks uh, but today I thought we'd take a look at some Something I've been after for a very very long time and some of you will recognize it uh, Techmoan did a video about it this is the Technics M1 codec uh, this is a really really rare thing and I got it from Sendico and I unboxed it on this very channel and uh, I'm really really excited to have found one because they're very hard to find they were only released in Japan and uh, they're really really expensive as well because they're so hard to find they have an absolutely fantastic sound quality um, and it comes with uh, either an output of a stereo headphone jack here or the I don't know what that's called quarter inch jack um, as well as regular output on the back um, I just use these headphones which has this little adapter thing um, so I can listen to me cassette tapes um, although it's portable it's not really portable allow me to quickly demonstrate so as you're walking it's, it just doesn't work. It's not really got a, uh, an ability to move around. Uh, so it's more of a sort of a stationary thing, but my days, does that look beautiful on a desk? It's just such a lovely little thing. I'm sure you will all agree. So uh, this is an original Sony TPS L2 Walkman. I thought I'd use that for sort of size comparison. Um, obviously this is a more familiar portable um, cassette player, but I guess this was Technic's attempt um, at it. I don't know exactly when the date was. Honestly, I'd recommend watching Techmoan's video if you want to uh, check out a bit more information about this. I'll leave that in the link below, but I want to restore this a little bit uh, and give it a nice clean, which is something I have not done yet. And it's also a very, very nice thing to take apart. Although uh, you just heard it working, I use the term working quite lightly. Um, it only works at full volume, which obviously makes my ears bleed, uh, but as I start to turn the volume down, I'm sure you can hear that crackling and stuff. That's because there's a potentiometer in there that operates um, via metal sliding on metal, which is oxidized over the years, so now there's not a very good contact on it. So the reason why it's probably okay up here is because that's how it was left for the decades that it wasn't used. And then obviously because that little metal contact is covering up some other metal contact underneath, that's not exposed to the air thus not oxidizing. Uh, so in order to actually listen to this, I have to have it on full blast, which is very painful, but I wanted to reserve um, taking this apart for this video. So it runs off of four C cell batteries, uh, which is quite a lot. To take this thing apart, it's actually quite a difficult process. It doesn't actually look like there's a lot of screws on here. You know, you've got a couple back here. Um, there's a couple on the bottom, but in order to take it apart, you have to start off from here. Now, uh, obviously I have watched Techmoan's video on this. That's how I found out um, about this thing. And in order to begin, you just have to slide this little piece off, which is a door that sort of looks fancier than it is. Um, it's just a sort of a dummy uh, screw cover thing there and stuff. So uh, yeah, although I think if we unscrew that, we can give this little um, piece of acrylic a clean in between the black and the acrylic there. So that will be worth doing. We'll do that at the very end. So let's go ahead and remove these two screws, which hopefully will re release the entire front portion of the uh, device. Don't really know what to call this cassette player, I suppose. Uh, oh, oh, look at that. Okay, there we go. So looks like there's some wires over here. Yeah, we've got one for the microphone. Uh, there's not a recording function on this at all. The microphone is a hotline button, uh, very similar to, well, exactly the same as this one, uh, so that when two people were listening, uh, you could press the microphone button and talk to each other, and it just slightly lowers the track. Um, however, this one actually completely stops the track and then just activates the microphone. So that means you might as well just be taking your headphones off um, whereas that one actually just lowers the track and continues to play and then the microphone runs through the headphones at regular volume. 
Uh, so this little bracket is just pulled off and then the microphone presumably should pull out, although I don't really want to pull on those wires. There we go. Perfect. Okay, and then next up we've also got, what's that, the power LED, I think that is. Uh, so let's go ahead and remove that as well and just make things a lot easier when it comes to uh, giving it a clean, which it very well needs. Good grief. Look at the inside of that. That is a uh, that is quite filthy. So uh, yeah, that's gonna have a lovely scrub in some hot soapy water. So what is next, I hear you scream. And I scream the same thing because I haven't got a clue. I think I'm gonna remove these four screws. I think that's the next logical step. There's another one here. I'm gonna go for that one as well because it's the same color and shape as the others. Uh, so let's see what happens now when we do this. Oh, it's coming. Ah, oh, there's another wire back there. Ah, okay, that is for the um, battery terminals. Okay, so these are the two wires that we need to uh, desolder. So I'm gonna use a little bit of flux because uh, this is gonna be some very, very dry solder that hasn't been uh, obviously soldered in a very, very, very long time. I'm gonna go ahead and say probably 40 years or so, 50 years maybe. Um, so the best way for me to get at this is probably this way actually. So let's just swing this around. And uh, yeah, the camera above is not ideal. I need to get a, def a different lens. Um, so let's have a go then at doing this. There's the first one. And there's the second one. That wasn't too bad. I'm not gonna touch this uh, too much because everything's working fine. The belt is nice and tight, uh, as you can probably see there, so I'm not gonna bother uh, changing that. And also it works. Could probably do with being replaced, um, having a belt with more tension uh, would probably make the uh, the wowing and fluttering effect a little bit less uh, but that isn't really a big issue plus I don't even want to try and take this thing apart uh, there seems to be multiple different layers to it and multiple different belts I don't know if you can see but there's actually another two inside there in a completely different place so it would just be a nightmare to try and replace all of that um, but obviously we do need to get to the potentiometers uh, which is under here. What I was trying to work out before I decided to desolder them was uh, there's some little sort of bent pins in the corners of these contacts, uh, which is holding it down. But I think if we just bend the tab up slightly so it doesn't hit anything, we should be able to slide that whole tab out. Okay, so I'm going to pull this wire out from here and I did bend the little tabs in the corner of this uh, battery contact down. I was trying to get that out before, uh, but there we go. Ah, that really hurt. Ah, that really, really hurt. That's what I was talking about with those little tabs, the little sort of shark teeth razor things. So we'll move that out of the way. Uh, and then we've also got this spring to come out, which I think is probably going to be a lot easier because the only thing keeping that in is the tension of the spring. I spoke too soon. All good, no damage at all. That was just very tricky. So the next thing we're gonna do is remove El Squeako over here, the handle, uh, which I think is done with these two screws here. So there's one and there's the other. And Japanese, oh my goodness me. It's just so well made. Look at these little brackets which hold that handle into place. Can you see the tiny little L and R? So considerate. Oh. So that is pretty much ready to go. Now I'm gonna do this very sparingly. I'm not just gonna dunk it underwater because there is a sticker here for the serial number that I don't wanna get wet. So I think for the most part, I'll probably just submerge slightly and scrub up with the toothbrush. Um, and then I'll just finish off the rest by hand with Q-tips and uh, a cloth. So that and that is gonna be done off camera. Um, but that's very nice that we've managed to get that all done. So the other thing we need to do is clean this potentiometer with the uh, the volume slider on there. So it looks like this piece just comes straight off, uh, which is fairly simple. So we can set that down. You're not really gonna be able to see that too well, uh, but let's just give it a try. Oh, 
Now we do want a healthy amount in there because it's uh, very, very crackly. Right, now I'm gonna just let gravity do the rest. So I'm just gonna sort of manipulate it in all different directions and then just move that slider up and down, hoping that whatever we're doing is working because I've unplugged the uh, battery terminals. So we can't just test to see if it's sounding better, but I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Also, I don't know what DC in that is and I doubt I have a barrel plug that big. But that looks pretty good. So whilst we're in here and we've got the isopropyl alcohol out, let's give the uh, tape head just a tiny little bit of a wipe uh, with it. It's actually not too bad. I don't know if this got a lot of use. That is good. I think we're actually pretty much ready now to just clean the shell of the device and then put it back together. So as I said, I'm going to do that off camera um, and I'm not going to be touching anything else of this part because it all works fine um, and it's not too dusty either. So that's going to be left as it is. I'm going to go and give that a clean and then we can reassemble the whole thing. And there we go. I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. It does actually look a lot cleaner, but that might just be like a placebo effect, um, having taken the whole thing apart and rinsing it all in the uh, shower and stuff. But yeah, the squeak on the handle has now gone. Uh, everything is looking a lot sort of shinier and cleaner. Uh, and I'm really, really pleased with the condition of it. Uh, there's a bit of sort of wear on the top. That's usually from where cables have been left on top of it. And the uh, coating on the cables have sort of melted the plastic. But that's only really on that top side. To be honest, if I was to take a magic eraser and go over some of the edges on this, it would probably sort of buff them up a tiny bit. But look, these things are super rare and I'm really, really happy with the condition that this one's in. And I'm just happy to have one in general. So yeah, let's uh, let's show you it working then. So. Um, let's quickly go through what we've got on the front. So obviously there's the volume over here. We've got the microphone. Uh, this is a metal um, or non-metal tape select. Uh, so it's normal or metal. Uh, and then you've got a pause button and that then engages the microphone. I'll show you that in a minute. You've got a stop, you've got a play, you've got fast forward and rewind, and then you've got an eject button. And uh, yeah, the mechanism of the door is really nice. It's very sort of slow opening and smooth. And uh, interestingly as well, when you actually press play, the um, mechanism for the actual reed head is motorized. So that actually goes up. I don't know if you can see that there, but it actually goes up. It's a motorized sort of um, mechanism, which is really, really high quality. Uh, it's, it's a very, very high quality device. So. Um, yeah, let's eject that and whack this in and close it up and uh, we're ready to play some music. Here we go. Headphones in on the side and play. So yeah, that works absolutely perfectly. I'm going to have to continue to talk over this because otherwise the video is going to get claimed for uh, copyright. But um, you can hear hopefully that that is actually working, the volume slider. Tiny little bit crackly still. I could probably do with um, some actual spray contact cleaner, which will hopefully get further in, but that's a lot better and I can actually find, you know, a quieter spot and it doesn't sound all crackly and stuff. So really, really pleased with that. Let me quickly show you the microphone. So if I just press the microphone button or the pause button, when I talk, if I turn this up a minute, when I actually talk, you should be able to hear 
the, the me speaking through this microphone. I'm sure that's going to sound very, very weird, but there we go. You can actually see that the microphone works and it's very nice and very high quality. Lovely. Okay, well, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Um, I have, I definitely have. It's been a lot of fun. I haven't done something like this on my YouTube channels in a while and I'm really glad that I did it. Um, Sorry about the weird angles before my camera up here is playing up and this camera is not made for doing all those close up shots and stuff. So uh, don't worry, when I do the Polaroid repair, uh, there's gonna be some really nice close up angles and stuff like that of the screws unscrewing. But hopefully you've enjoyed this video nonetheless and I'll catch you all in the next one. Goodbye.